Recorded live. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be across the nation or around the world. Once again, you're listening to VMware Communities Roundtable Podcast. This is podcast number 687. My name is Eric Nilsson, and with me today, I don't have any guests because it's late on a Thursday afternoon as we're doing a podcast with Iwan Rahabak, and he's out of uh, APJ region, so it's morning for him and it's evening for me. So we do not have Corey or Matt today, but uh, we're going to talk to him. He's a book author. He has done two different books, vSphere Metrics and VMware Ops Transformation. So we're going to talk to him about his career, how he became an author, and uh, you know what he's been writing on. And he knew he released a new version of his book, vSphere Metrics. So we're going to talk to him about that and get to know who Ewan is. So, but before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the news and what's actually happening. So Call for papers. Call for papers is happening. Uh, they're they're out, and we have been getting submissions for both VMware Code and uh, V. Let's see, the VMUG slash VMTN Community Theater. So I think we have 20 papers in so far, which is great. Excited about that. I think we have an openings for maybe 100 different paper sessions uh, at, at Explore this year in Vegas. So uh, should be fun. Should have the two theaters and uh, get your ideas in. We still have plenty of spaces going. It's Call for Papers closes sometime around mid-May. I want to say May 5th or May 8th, but I think they're going to usually extend it. So uh, if you're going to be at Vegas, love to see you, love to get your paper in the queue for the community sessions. You actually have to be at Vegas. We don't get you a pass for the community sessions. They're usually 15 or 30 minutes. So go submit them uh, for VMware code. If you have an interesting code topic, sometimes we can get you a pass. If you're desperate and you need a pass, uh, we can sometimes get you a pass for those ones. Uh, and, you know, love to hear good code topics. Code topics are about writing code. So if you've got code, uh, the best ones to get accepted and the ones that will sometimes give passes for is ones that you're actually demoing code and showing people how to do code. So looking forward to those papers getting in. Those are out. I know Corey's not with us, but he is starting to process the sub the subgroup apps for the VExpert program. So if you've uh, submitted your app for the subgroup group programs. I know he's in the process of you know, doing that work and announcements will be forthcoming. So that's what's happening uh, around uh, the news. And we're excited about Explore. We're laying out the village. Uh, so uh, looking forward to getting those papers in. Also, the general call for all topics are out. So if you have something that isn't code or community related, you can submit your papers. There is a call for papers on uh, the Explore website, VM somewhere.com slash explore. Uh, go check that out. And uh, and if you're going to come to explore, never too early to, you know, start thinking about travel and hotels. Uh, we're going to be in Vegas as always. And so looking forward to that continuing on. And I think that's what we've got for the news. So thanks for listening to that. Let's get to our guests. So let me introduce Ewan. Uh, Ewan, uh, we always start on the community past podcast and ask like, you know, who are you? Where do you work? I know you're a uh, domain architect for VC, the VCF division at Broadcom, which is our the VCF division, um, formerly VMware. Um, tell us a little bit about your career history. I know you work at VMware or at, VC, at Broadcom now and VCF division, uh, but how did you get here? How long have you been here? And what does your career arc look like? Yeah, uh, I started 16 years ago. I was an SE before that in Sun Microsystems and in Singapore. The, I've been in Singapore basically for 30 years, but I was born in Indonesia. So it's an island next to Bali. And uh, people know Bali more than they know Indonesia. So that's why I said and it's an island next to Bali. And uh, I was asked by my sales at that time. I was just, I mean, I was an account SE uh, for strategic accounts. And at that time, the VMware in ASEAN had an opening for a global account SE to be based in Singapore. So he applied for a sales and I applied for the SE. The funny thing is, uh, at that time, 16 years ago, I didn't really, I wasn't really convinced on, on this little thing called ESX, right? Because I was a sun guy, 
and I used to be doing big boxes, right? And right. this little toy, I wasn't convinced, but since he applied, and so I accompany him because uh, in Sun, the SE and the sales just went together. The, and he, he did not get a job and uh, I got the job. Uh, he got a job six, 15 years later. So he's in, he's in VMware now, he's in Broadcom now, hmm. right? And uh, so we met again, basically, in the same company after 15 years, right? I'm very happy. And you know, it's, it, it's funny because I came from Sun Microsystems as well. And uh, I wasn't sure it was uh, GSX was, uh, was there. And ESX hadn't really just came out. And it, it was just, you know, bright vSphere before vSphere 3 or 3.0. And it wasn't called vSphere. It was called VMware Virtual Infrastructure 3. And uh, I was in the same boat. I was like, uh, I don't know. I'll do this for a year or two because I came from Solaris and Unix and, you know, LS minus L. And this whole thing was over on Windows and doing virtualization with GSX on top of Windows. And I thought, well, this is a good transition out of the Unix space and into like a more, you know, more traditional compute with Windows. And so, and then here I am, I think I'm 17 and a half years later. So maybe just a, a year before before you came, I came as well. So very similar paths. And the second thing I'd say is Singapore is a beautiful country. And and uh, and I love the, uh, the, the, the vibe the country has. It's one of my favorite uh, Asian Pacific uh, countries. So wonderful. Yeah, thank you for that. And the reason why I mentioned that background in Sun Microsystem because uh, in it's, it's in a sense is required, and that is why the book on vSphere metrics uh, has a lot of element of the kernel. Because I, what I found is there, there are hundreds of metrics, and, and I can tell you in the Perf Manager API there are 822 metrics, and uh, I am. I am in a sense, I'm the owner of, I'm compiling, I'm, I'm documenting these metrics, right? So uh, going forward now that we are, it's a Broadcom, we are one big family. So I own these things uh, in the last couple of months since uh, we, we are now under Broadcom. So 822 metrics under Perf Managers and 322 under Stats Registry. I find that a lot of uh, uh, practitioners rely on memory on in like let's say they take cpu cost up or cpu cost up means this because they rely on memory but if you go in the first principle you understand how the kernel cpu scheduler works how the memory management from the guest os to the vm to the esxi from the process the full level of memory management if you know how things work the metrics will come naturally you rely a lot less on memory and it will stick with you for a long time. And even if you forget, you can say, hold on, uh, ESXi, uh, the storage subsystem works this way. So that means I'm expecting metrics on this part and it has to be a part of this. This is how they connect together. That is why the book is 400 pages is because instead of just regurgitating the metrics one by one, you know, object by object, it takes right. uh, an explanation from a system architecture on how it works because i'm hoping that you will remember it then you don't need to read the damn books anymore because it's, it's very <laughs> boring reading 400 pages of metrics right? so that yeah. was the sun the foundation i would call it before we get too far in um where would people get the vSphere metrics book these days just because i know yeah. you came out with one in january 2024 let's yeah. get People sometimes don't want to listen for the whole hour. Let's tell them how they can go get that book. Yeah. So the, the only place they can get it, I would say, is on LinkedIn because that's the only place I say it. And uh, the book, I don't think they can get it at, at any part of VMware.com. And okay. it will, you, you are most welcome. To, uh, it would be wonderful to list it somewhere at VMware.com. Because I, I really don't market the book. I just put it on LinkedIn. I said, guys, this book is available. Go and get them. So both both books are on my LinkedIn, but it's not exactly on my profile, right? It's like the links is not there. It's just in one of the many posts that I have. So it doesn't have a house, basically. It doesn't have a home. All and right. So this, this book is a little bit like Fight Club. 
you know, if we have to tell you where it is, then, you know, we're not going to tell you where it is, right? It's a uh, gift. We're not going to talk about Fight Club. But uh, so if they really want to find it, um, I suppose you could go to Google and you could search on uh, vSphere metrics and then your name, Ewan, uh, I W A N and Rahabok, R A H A B O K. Is that uh, is that correct? So that if the you want to go find this book, I would say go Google it and then look for him on LinkedIn and it's in a post somewhere, right? And maybe right. we can get it uh, published a link to this on the on the podcast as well. And uh, I'll take your yeah. advice and see if we can maybe put pick up make a book list on the on the the new communities we're launching with Broadcom on May fifth. So it might be fun to have a book listing. There. So th that's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. I think it's like there are there are enough folks with books that I was telling Frankie, there are probably like two dozen books, uh, but there is no there is no home in VMware.com right. for all these books. And yeah. uh, I think like well, especially now that people are self-publishing, right? So a lot of people published in the beginning and maybe you even published your book with a publisher, but then yeah. I've noticed that a lot of authors are just self-publishing these days. Yeah. Working with publishers, I found it, uh, they don't serve the interests of the authors, which is fair enough. They, they run a business. I, I fully respect that, right? But at the end of the day, I have a requirements as an author, which is, I need to publish the book when I think it is ready. That's one part. And I need it to be written in a, in a manner that I want it. And I want it to, and I want to be able to, most importantly, continue updating the book. The publisher work in a concept that, okay, you can have the first edition and then keep it for like a couple of years, then you have your second edition. Right. That didn't meet. In my case, it probably meets other people need. Uh, I like it to be every month. I used to do it every month. Like, I just keep updating it every yeah. month because uh, it's like the Linux kernel in a sense, All right? Then you just keep updating it. Then it do it doesn't have to follow the traditional concept of first edition, second editions, right? And right. Uh, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can I can definitely see that uh, where now with the internet and with, you know, you can self publish, it's dynamic. It's kind of like moving from a, a Microsoft PowerPoint to Google spreadsheets where everything's there online, you edit it constantly, everybody's got a Google address and they can come in and I can share everything with everybody. And the next you know, there's like hundreds of people engaging with uh, content that uh, I can share on that. I just want to, I mean, uh, my experience uh, writing online, right? And uh, if you are writing in Markdown language, HTML, I find it very painful. Uh, if the if the book overall structure isn't static yet, isn't firm yet. So uh, what happens in my case, the two books uh, evolve. And uh, even, the, even the main, in a sense, the, the way we structure the so I shuffle a lot of like tens of pages reshuffle chapters that is that is very painful in in online editing tools such as markdown and HTML I, I find the classic Microsoft Word it's just the easiest I can just drag and drop and shuffle things so that is why my book is not in markdown is not in a website and it is just a Microsoft Word and I did not even uh, make it a PDF because uh, it's easier for people in Microsoft Word. They can just copy the thing and then they make it as part of the internal operations guide, right? That they share with them, and then they add their own uh, you know, company. Let's say you work in a bank, that there are certain things about the bank that you can write it down. And then you take pieces of my book that are relevant for you and then go ahead. Yeah, that makes, yeah, that makes sense. And if, you know, if you're not in it to, to, to make tons of money, which I, you know, I know that even when you would in the old days, 10, 20 years ago, they'd only give you a dollar a book. So you'd spend all this time and you'd maybe make four or $5,000. And it wasn't very important to your, your income at all. Uh, there's a little bit of ego saying you have a book, but in the end, I'm a community guy. I like sharing knowledge. And so I think this is a, just a great way to share knowledge. Right. And so, yeah, I, yeah. I like like the idea, right? How did you back back up a little bit? How did you end up in the I, the concept of building a vSphere metrics book to begin with? Yeah. 
So it's, uh, so going back when I was an account SE, this is back in the ESX uh, 3.0, ESX 3.5, right? So at that time, because the global accounts, the global banks, etc., they already had some level of adoption of this thing called the VI3, right? And that's the only product VMware had. And there was no other product. The ecosystem was not matured and my job was to broaden the adoption and that means i need to convince uh, customers right so i used to spend a lot of time just sitting next to the vi admin looking at the metrics and say look i know it is uh, your esx is uh, four socket two cores eight cores and you are running this vm but look, there's still space for it, man. You don't have to be afraid. There's still space for it. You can, we can squeeze in more. So I spent a lot of time on performance and capacity management, digging down. Look, 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 look. There's this metric that I measured when the VM isn't getting. Look, there is this CPU ready. There, I spent a lot of time taking screenshot after screenshots of, of just sitting down with customers, explaining them, right? And after a while, you know, it became a, it became a, a block. To, my brother Sunny Dua was instrumental in helping me. Look, he said you gotta set up a. He left already, right? Then it's you gotta set up a block. So okay, so he helped me set up a block, and after like two hundred uh, blocks articles, right? You know, each block is about three pages, so there was uh, enough content to form a book. So by two thousand fourteen, I I published the first book. I think it's about 250 pages only, I think. And uh, and maybe it's about, at that time, uh, the book consists of uh, three parts, right? There is uh, where we talk about concept, like what exactly is capacity management? What do you consider, you know, allocation, reservation, right? So there's one part of that, and then one part of uh, some dashboards that, that we've, at that time, now at that time, the, uh, center operations a company we acquired uh, uh, that became uh, the realized operations today aria operation whatever you want to call it uh, that that was like a dream come true to me because instead of when I, when I first saw 1.0 of integrian which become aria operations today right when i saw that i said wow this is like a dream come true because instead of taking screenshot after screenshot one by one cluster by cluster host by host vm i suddenly can just slice and dice this whole environment just tell me is there any vm that is not getting the cpu that it won and tell me when and it's just like one one dashboard it's just just like that in five minutes i'm done so that was uh that is when i started building dashboards on it right and uh, at that time, uh, Ronald Builder, he was the he was the VMark leader in JPMC. He was telling me that look, they were using vCenter operation, and he said it's just like a big data. I can slice and dice the whole environment to, the way I want it, All right? So the yeah, so the book consists of dashboard and consists of metrics. So that's 150 pages. About ten years ago, the first one was published under the Pack Publisher, right? Mm -hmm. And then the second edition was about, I think, it's about maybe about four hundred pages on the, and and I broadened the topic, and that was still under Pack, and then Pack was kind enough when I said, look, I think, I think it was in 20, 2020, I think I was telling them, look, I wanna, I wanna publish. Uh, the third edition, but not under you anymore. Can I have your permission? Right? Because the funny thing is the IP belongs to them. That's mm. the thing I don't like about working with publisher. The IP belongs to them. This is like, are you serious? Right? And so they were kind enough to let me to take it, to open source it basically, make it free. Right. Plus anyway, the content of the third edition was largely different than the second edition and of course now you got the fourth edition after we became like 900 pages or 1000 pages i split them into two so 
there's hardly anything on the second editions anymore that is in the fourth edition and fifth year matters now. Yeah. Yeah, you've been at this for 10 years. Uh, the, the second, the book that you split out, I think you titled it VMware Ops Transformation, mm -hmm. which uh, focuses on reactive to proactive um, automation, I guess. What, um, I guess I look at the load that we're seeing on servers now and the number of VMs and the number of cores. Has this become a bigger topic for people or because vSphere has become more mature is it less of a critical topic I'm, i wonder where this is going from the standpoint of needing to drill down into these metrics to run your 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 sddc you know your data center automation yeah and i think it has become less of a topic which it should not and uh, so let me ask you eric Okay, I conduct workshops. I call it operationalize your world, and I've probably done it probably about uh, three or four dozen in in various countries, right? And uh, I did it not so much in the U.S. Uh, I did it for a large uh, bank in the U.S. Uh, several years ago. I did. I, I was. I, I spent three days there, right? But mostly in APJ and uh, some some part of Europe. So in the workshop, I would ask, look. I've been in IT for, for a long time. How many of you have been around for more than two decades, right? So there'll be a couple of hands raised. How many of you knows VMware for more than one decade? There'll be a couple of hands raised. I said, do you notice something? Why you need a two decade experience, individual contributor, an engineer, talking to uh, somebody with two decades experience in IT operation and IT support. Why? Why don't we just get, why don't, why don't we have fresh graduate talking to fresh graduate? We can cut the cost by five times, mm -hmm. right? Because my salary is much higher than a fresh graduate and your salary is much higher than a fresh graduate. Tell you why, why, why do we even have a job? Do you think that we deserve this thing? Right? Do you think that the company love us? All right? I think the fact of the matter, I, mean, I want to ask you, Eric, like, why, why do you think like, why? why this uh, admin and engineer right e1 this guy in singapore okay. it's uh, why doesn't that why do you need a, an experienced admin I, I i know the answer i know the answer which is you know if you put wordpress on virtual machines and you know you load up those machines and you get a two second delay it's going to take you a while to figure out what's going on let alone the uh, security of getting well, I can, that it's I, 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 working i disagree eric Let's say mm -hmm. I'm an intern, okay? Let's say I'm an intern. Sure. Okay? And uh, there's nobody else in the team, just an intern, just me. I'm responsible for a 10,000 VM environment. Sure. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to tell, get VMware Consulting, get VMware PSO. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are we running on? We are running Dell. Or get Dell Architects, get Dell Managed Services. What are we running? What else? Microsoft. Okay, get Microsoft Premium Support. Just get all of them in the room here for me. 24 by 7. Just get all of them. You can have the world expertise. The only thing stopping that that idea from happening is cost. That intern is cheap, but the intern is being backed by the vendor's uh, top. That is expensive. Right. So the only reason why we are in the room, I told the audience, is cost. You save company money. That's the reason why. Now, with now with uh, I guess with uh, Broadcom pricing and with the cloud uh, repatriation, I think cost in which you can squeeze more VMs. Sure. Uh, I spoke with two banks in Singapore. One is one is a UK bank in Singapore with a big presence, and one is a local bank. And uh, the UK bank, I think like a, like a few, few weeks ago, I, I met them this year. They said, uh, E1 is very simple. We are cheaper by a factor of four. By a factor of four. And they outsource their, the, their data centers. Right? And the same thing with the bank. The, the local bank went to AWS, stayed there for several years, came back, came back to on-premise. 
Right. I think they came back like about a year or so ago or two years ago. And the reason was very simple. I can squeeze more. The cost per VM is lower, not by 10%, not by 20%. So that is something that our practitioners, last time in VMAT, I remember this funny, funny incident. So we were doing VMAT. And because right. uh, I set up, I set up the, the predecessor, the precursor of VMAC in Singapore. So I, I set up the user group in Singapore, right? And I don't know what it was called before VMAC. Do you know? Yeah, it's always been VMUG. It's always been VMUG. From 2002. Yeah, it's been VMUG. Okay. So, yep. so, it's, uh, so I, I, I got a, a couple of customers. So one from a bank and, and one from, well, two from, one from a local bank, one from a global bank. And who is the third guy that I got? I think I only got two guys. That I said, guys, can you help? Let's let's build this company. Let's build this community, right? right. And uh, so, so there was one session where they were supposed to do a demo. And then they say, Iwan, the laptop doesn't work. Now we need about half an hour. Can you say something, whatever you want for half an hour? Just say it, you know, because we need time. Because there are people waiting already, right? At that time, this is like before COVID days. So I said, guys, who are you? Like, in a sense, what? If you look at yourself, okay, what are you? I said I used an analogy. You're like, you you are you are like a chef. You create this uh, this uh, dish, okay? Uh, VM as a surface. That is the underlying thing is transparent to your consumer, to the diners, whether, whether what you use and the underlying server, storage, network, how you virtualize, you know, you got this uh, virtual network is kind of transparent to them. They just get a, a VM just like that. Before they ask you for a server, they tell you what is the model number. No, no. So you are like a, a chef. You create this thing. But you know what? You forgot to put a price on your creation because you forgot to put a price on your creation. People do not value you as much. They ju you just become a, you just become in the plumbing in the kitchen. So you got to step out and tell my creation compare with, let's say the cloud is this much better, this much cheaper. My goal VM, same price with the cloud twice the performance, twice the availability, twice the security. My bronze VM, same quality with the cloud, half price, better support, those kind of things. So right. you got to be able to articulate your creation. It's a pity that you stay technical just in the kitchen. It's not being appreciated. And I think this, I'm hoping that so our community will step up because cost is a topic that is that is more relevant to a CFO and a CIO rather than let me tell you how stretch cluster in FISEN works, right? You're not going to get much time from CIO on that kind of thing. But if you talk about SLA, gold, silver, sure. bronze, availability SLA, performance SLA, and you talk about price, you talk about comparison with public cloud. That is relevant. Yeah, and, and that gets to my original question, which is, you know, is this topic, you know, more important now than it has been in the past? And your answer was, well, it should be, it might not be, but it is interesting now that Broadcom has taken over, right? And they are coming at the market as a premium priced solution, right? They are made that clear that they want to go after VCF and the whole stack. And then how much you can get out of this, the performance of it, the tuning of it to overload the number of VMs you've got on a 16 core machine or 32, 32 core machine will be more and more important as you're selling your services. Yes. Yep. Yes. I, I can totally exactly. see that. Yep. Yeah. Talk, because now, the way I see it, right? I, I'm, I'm as, as a professional. 
uh, VMware has been around for like two decades. So there are enough uh, community who have enough mouths on VMware, right? So my take on it is time to step up. So you have mastered vSphere, now it's time to master NSX, vSAN, and the VCF uh, stack on top of it. So, and you present this thing as a single unified private cloud that you architect. And uh, because uh, at the end of the day, the customers don't really care about the individual component, whether that is NSX, vSphere, vSAN, VRLUS, what? I just, hey, give me my VM, right? And uh, I want to run some Gen AI workload. Hey, right, how come it's slow? Tell me, uh, give me all the counters. I want to see it. So those kind of, I think it should be, there's an opportunity for the community members to step up. It, it's uh, because now that from Broadcom point of view, it moved into a, into a suite. It's no longer about Microsoft Word is better than, you know, Word Perfect, Lotus 1, 2, 3 is better. Now it is just Microsoft 365. Now let's move on and now let's discuss the business impact of it. So I have an easy question, and this is just my own personal question. I run vSphere in Iraq and San Jose, and I've got some workloads on it, right? And uh, I go to vCenter, and I look at, you know, my graphs, and I'm looking at, you know, what's actually happening. Where do people go to drill into the metrics when you're talking, you know, I'm running vSphere. Um, am I SSHing into the ESX server and then running, you know, some commands that get me data out of that? Or am I, I have never seen this in vSphere, but maybe I just haven't drilled down in the right spots before. I'm just curious when your book addresses this, where do you go get this data? Yeah, I think, okay. Uh, in vSphere, okay, which has which present itself the, through the vCenter's uh, UI, the vSphere client UI, and through ESX Top, I say this at the they have a use case uh, with this uh, five second in ESX Top. I, I'm I'm speaking right now, not not the roadmap that we are working on. Unfortunately, I can't talk the roadmap, and but I'm I'm the engineer. I'm one of the engineer working on that. And I can tell you that that uh, a lot of lot of a lot of change that ah, this is something exciting a lot of things that that we could not do before in vmware now is being done now is being planned so there is an epic there is jira right uh, initiative to, to to get it delivered now to answer your question the answer for, i said earlier right why when the integrian which is the Center Operation 1.0, when it was yeah. released like more than a decade ago, it was like a dream come true to me because I can answer questions, examples, okay? So let's say you got 10,000 DMs, okay? And you want to ask, okay? Uh, I want to know for every single one of this VM in the last three months, Give me the 99.9 percentile CPU ready and sort it by the worst. Give me a table of 10,000 VM, every VM in the last three months, and give to me sorted by the worst CPU ready that experienced by the VM. But I do not want the max because that is could be an outlier, one time outlier. I don't care about that. Give me 99.9 percentile or 19 or whatever number that you say. Okay. And in just like what the, in my experience 30 seconds is done 30 seconds is done the and to create that in the ui of of today aria operation is just click 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 it's just like that and there are you probably know, i mean i'm sure you know you know this guy called duncan apping sure right? of course yep so duncan and i we were in a zoom call with a customer on fsan this is many many years ago Okay, uh, when Fisen was introduced. So there was a customer in Indonesia, 12 node, v, uh, 12 node uh, Fisen, uh, 600 VMs. Okay. And they were discussing performance issue. And I remember Duncan was saying, you know, uh, yeah, I think it would be nice to be able to, to you know, when we, when we pick a VM, we can see the disk group, et cetera, et cetera. As they were talking, I was just building it in front of them. And they didn't realize that, hey, it's actually done. 
And E1 has just built it because they were busy talking. And there was just like only a couple of minutes is done in front of them. Right. So it's, uh, that to me is, is unfortunate that uh, that kind of uh, capability. That's why when you look at ARIA operation, there are those who are hardcore, the, like the, the 1% who, are, who would die by it basically. Right. And then majority of us, unfortunately, there's not enough uh, awareness uh, on, on the capability of this product. Yeah, that's it is it is fascinating to you know understand that as broadcom and vmware people put together vcf as a bundle where now if you do buy vcf or the pricing is going to be such that you're going to get vcf you're going to get aria operations as part of this and then people are going to start to learn that this is there and it will help you squeeze out performance and load up VMs on given servers, right? And if you just buy, you know, vSphere independently, right? You buy standard edition, you're never going to learn that. You're never going to be exposed to the fact that this data and in the software is there for you just to be able to, you know, pull a report like that. Yeah. My, my, I'll, uh, yeah. Remember I was say, okay, I said earlier that there's enough uh, miles on the VMware community. So this is one of my, in, in one of my workshop, I said, guys, you and I, we are all infra guy. We are architect. Now, I said there are, there are three levels of architect. We are system architect at heart. So we are at, at, the, fun, at the foundation level, we are system architect. We are technical yeah. people. Yeah. Now, as you know, CIO, CFO, I'm going to be inter that much interested in the in the nsx let's say tunneling okay so what you gotta do you gotta change the system and even not well you don't have a choice you are present you you buy sddc and you sell ias your application team do not care whether it is vm vmware vm somewhere vm nowhere they do not care it's transparent to them to, to a certain extent right because you virtualize it right so you have converted an SDDC, which is a system, into IAS, which is a service. So in SDDC, you talk architecture. In IAS, you talk, you talk service level agreement. You talk SLA. So you move. So there is the foundation is a system architect. Then there is a service architect part of you, which you need to articulate you need to document in your intranet etc document the service level and on top of that at the end of the day everything is about price performance you want it good you want it fast it won't be cheap right so you explain look can i can i deliver performance high performance of course i can it won't be cheap right you want you want a very very high availability i can do it for you i'm an architect it just won't be cheap right just like an airline there's business class there's economy class right so you articulate the architecture in terms of surface and in terms of cost the price so move up from a system architect to a surface architect that can engage at the CIO level and CFO level. Look, we have a private cloud. Okay. What it is, uh, you don't have to worry about it. And while well, it is VCF, it's just called VCF. Okay. Underneath that, don't worry about it. It's under my care. Something wrong, you can you can go after me. Now, but let's talk about what our customers are getting and why it is better than the public cloud. That kind of conversation has to happen. And that is what I talk aloud in, in my second book and in my workshop. My workshop doesn't talk about, in a sense, the nitty gritty of it, right? Yeah. My brother-in-law got a new position. He worked at eBay and uh, eventually eBay, you know, consolidated and he had to go look for a new position. And he got a site reliability uh, engineering job, right? Which also plays into this because and not site system system reliability engineering job where 
he's actually looking at, you know, not only what is the cost, what is the performance, but the, what's the re reliability of this? And, you know, can we do it to X number of nines? And, you know, how many services are dependent on what other services? And, you know, how do you deliver a complicated uh, environment that's providing an application service across multiple, you know, infrastructure, infrastructure components? And how do we how do we build that so that it's not only secure, but reliable, right? And I, I've seen that problem in myself where I can architect something and it runs really well 95% of the time, but then how do I optimize that so that it's, you know, 99.99 and people are happy with the performance of that service as well. And I feel like that's part of the equation here as well. It's not only just um, looking at the architecture from a performance perspective, but a reliability perspective as well. So uh, my take on it is there, uh, you look, if you looked at it from, a, from your customer standpoint, so let's say you got 10,000 VMs and uh, let, let's, let's play this way. So you are an application developer, or, or you are uh, you are a team lead. You are you are an apps architect, okay? And and let's say you maintain our let's say we are a bank. You maintain our internet banking apps, highly visible to the public, okay? You got a team of developers, or you got you work with your UX, you got whatever, okay? I happen to be your infra guy. Your internet banking, let's just say. Let's just say 1,000 VMs in my environment, okay? Of course, it's in multiple data centers as per, as per the requirement of availability. But that 10,000 VM is only 2% of my environment. My environment is 50,000 VMs because we do other things. Mm -hmm. yeah, yours is important. I 100% agree. You pay me good money for that kind of service because you want gold class. For your production okay and then for your test and dev you you are happy with uh with uh bronze class okay because you also have to deal with budget right and uh so so my question to you so i'm a vmware guy eric and you are the you are my customer you are one of my customer okay you are not my only customer you are one of my customer you are top customer okay i need to maintain relationship with you right and there is no way politically I'm going to antagonize you. Okay. So I ask you a question. So Eric, so you got this 10,000, you got this 1,000 VM spread all over the place in, okay, in multiple. So what is your ask? What is your ask? What do you want from me? Because you don't care about the underlying, you know, ESXi, right? It's, it's not your nope. problem. Okay? I want and my application so to stay up and deliver. Ah, so this is my answer, Eric. Your application is none of my business. You buy from me IAAS. You buy from me a blank Windows template. What application you write there, whether you got an open source apps, whether you do a homegrown code, can I can I agree that is your problem? Sure. You write a bad code, can I agree that is your problems? Hmm, I don't know. You I... write a bad code. Why should I be responsible for it? I just give you a blank VM. That's what you pay for me, right? You buy from me a VM. You do not buy from me internet banking apps. No, I right? I need to buy infrastructure that scales to the point where my application no. stays up, even if I've written it poorly. Wait, wait a minute. Okay, that is your statement. I'm saying, what are you buying from me? What are you paying me? Yeah, I'm buying, I'm I mean, buying yeah. infrastructure. Okay. Sure. Then I said, okay, Eric, how many VMs are you going to buy? What what well, kind of VM size? Two CPU? Well, you, you tell me, right? You will tell me. Right. Okay, E1. Sure. Mm -hmm. E1, I need, okay, at any given moment, 24 by 7, I need 100 VMs. Okay? Done. But I want to be able to burst to how many? Right. 10,000. Where is your money, Eric? Right? Where is your money? Right? So you're going to tell me, uh, E1, I have money. I'm gonna buy up to 500. That is all my, all the money I have. Fine. My have. job, yeah. My job is to supply you that. My job is not to question you, but to supply you, right? Mm -hmm. So, so my job is to make sure 
when you scale to the um, to the number of VM that you that you agree to pay for, I will give it to you. All right? Sure. Okay. So what you run inside is none of my problems. Agree? I struggle with that concept, but sure, I'll I'll agree with it because okay, because you buy from me a blank VM. Yes, I'm buying VM service from you. Sure, right? Yeah, we talk we talk vCPU, we talk we talk RAM, we talk this, we talk network, right? right? Sure. And maybe if I'm responsible, maybe if you buy from me Linux as a service, yes, I will make sure your Linux is up. I will make sure your Linux is patched. Okay, I'll right. do that. Mm -hmm. If you if you if you if you if you if in your payment to me includes operating system okay let's assume it does let's assume okay. let's assume you pay me that okay mm -hmm. so linux i will take care of it it will be secure it will be up okay whether your apps inside linux is up or not it's not your i don't problem. know yeah that's right okay good happy with that okay so what do you want Ivan? when i ask you i want 200 pm because i pay for it it better be up right right it cannot go down okay my next question eric what kind of availability sla you want because every nine is going to cost you money right you cannot ask for 100 percent available uptime there is no such thing unless unless you run fault tolerant mainframe okay this is x86 after a while right so I said, Eric, it is better that you handle application, you handle availability by having redundant VM, right? Mm -hmm. It's cheaper for you, I said. It's cheaper for you to buy extra VM than insisting on me to FT every single VM of yours. Right. Agree? Yeah, I agree. Sure. Good. Okay, so now we can discuss. Eric, what is the number? Let's say we agree 99.99. Okay, that is your first SLA. 99.99% every single VM, individually. Individually, just like you're flying in an airlines, you sit down with your family, 10 people, everybody will get their food, everybody will get their seat, everybody will be allowed to use the toilet. It's an individual SLA. By the way, the cloud AWS doesn't talk like this. They, they, they will not talk about your EC2. They will say their, their AZ, the availability zone, is the one protected, not your VM. So now I am already stepping up my, my surface to you because you will tell me, Ewan, I don't care if your ESXi or your cluster is down. I only care about my VM. That's what I pay you, Ewan, right? Mm -hmm. So I will also find, find. I will not be, I will not in a sense, uh, be in a sense doing like AWS where I only measure my own kitchen. You measure the, let's measure the dining area. You have 200 diners, 200 PMs, 99.95 each done, done. Okay. They're up. So this is already better than AWS. Okay. Because now it's, you have 200 individual SLA. Because if one VM is down, violating the SLA, and the other 199 did not, you will not accept an excuse from me, hey, Eric, come on. The average of the 200 is good. Right. Sure. You can't. You're going to say, hey, Iwan, look, like I'm flying an airline. When I fly an airline with 10 people there sitting, everybody will get their food. You cannot say, well, the first guy get double the food. No, 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 Iwan. Everybody will have to eat. That's part of the, we bought the ticket. We bought the ticket. We bought 200 VMs, right? You do not buy resource pool. Resource pool is different concept. That is not VM as a service. That is a resource pool as a service in which I do not care what you put there. I just give you chunk of CPU, chunk of memory. That's what I, so that's a different business contract. Okay, so we're not talking about that. So now 200 VMs. SLA individually. Okay. Anything else that you want? 
I, I have no idea, but I think I'm good. I just want my VMs. I'll, I'll manage my application. I need them up. I need them running. I need a certain amount of memory. I need a certain amount of CPU per VM that I can calculate what my app's going to run. Don't know what else I need. Eric, just because your VM is up does not mean it is fast. <laughs> sure. You're right. I want X amount of cycles. Right. So now we are talking about the second SLA. The first one is availability SLA. The second SLA is performance SLA. Okay. Sounds good? Yeah. By the way, did that, it doesn't exist in the cloud. AWS is not going to give you performance SLA. Okay. Now, the performance SLA, it goes back. What kind of performance SLA you want from this VM, Eric? Let's have a discussion. What, what need, do you want from me? Uh, I need I need X amount of gigahertz out of that CPU or out of the out of that to apply to that VM over time. Okay. Let's say you okay. Good. What about uh, so so what about what about this? Let's say you buy. Let's say each VM that you buy from me is one CPU, four gig, and 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 hundred gig of this. What kind of SLA you want on storage? Uh, I need X amount of I/O bandwidth, and I need X amount of latency covered. Ah, latency. Latency, right? Mm -hmm. So, latency. So there is a CPU memory disk network. That's what you paid for. That's what that's what make up a VM. I will give you four SLA, CPU memory disk network, individually. Because you don't want me to say, hey, Eric, come on, I made three of them, man. The one the one is not mad, but on average, they are good. No, 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 you want in, that's not like that. That's not like that, okay? Remember the airline, there's yeah. the food, you know, there is everything. I get, everything has to I get okay. where you're going here, right? Which is yeah. the SLAs come down to each component and then you got to measure those to be able to exactly. see whether, whether you're meeting my SLAs. Yep. Okay. So, and again, the SLA is not going to be 100%. It's going to be 99.9 something, right? Sure. Yeah. And your gold is going to be, let's say, four nines and your bronze is going to be three nines, right? Sure. Because yep. that's the reason why you pay extra nine is because you have the money and you expect something better. Right? But you are willing to accept E1, it will not be a hundred. Right? So yeah. we are running out of time. So, okay. So now it's fast. What next? What, ne what else do you want from me, Eric? This VM as a service. No idea. You've you've exceeded <laughs> my my arch architecture as, as a guy. <laughs> Okay, but Eric. I get where you're going here, which is how do you, I, I assume you're going to pop the stack here and say, it's about measuring all of these and making sure that you're meeting those SLAs for each one of these components across the whole architecture, right? Is that, is that where you're headed with this example? It's, it, it's about, yes, but, but it is more about know what you sell. Each of us, while we are technical, we are selling something. You sell something because your customers, the apps team, are not interested in the internal architecture of your VCF. It's a service. That service has a quality of service. Know what it is so that you know how to articulate the value. Everything has a price. That's how you justify your value as a professional in your organization. Okay. I, I I did not understand that, but I can see where that's going, where, you know, as a professional, you need to be able to articulate, you know, the services that you're selling Correct. with metrics. Yeah. Why, why is gold twice the price, right? You have to be able right. to explain that, right? And how is it, how is it better than AWS? You have to be able to explain it. Surface. It's a surface, not, not an architecture. Right. Right. Now, just to complete that, the third thing that you want from me, Eric, okay, just because something is fast does not mean it's secure. Sure. 
I, I didn't want to complicate that with the security, but that was my one of my first things I was going to ask because yeah. after I've been ransomware this year and my own servers, I'm kind of very sensitive to anything yeah. you're implementing has to be secure. Yeah. So the security SLA is is in our industry is the least mature. The most mature is availability SLA. The second one that is far less mature is performance SLA. Security SLA, it is even very early stage. Yeah. All right. I hope it's good for your audience. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, hundred um, percent. Because it it's also framing a dialogue that will happen with most of the IT pr practitioners that are listening. Is you know what? How do I compete against the cloud? How do I show value? How do I show value with you know, on-prem virtualization that VMware offers with VCF, and everybody is starting to look at that now. And there's probably 70% of our audience has just been sitting with vSphere and hasn't gone through the whole stack. They've just been comfortably purchasing vSphere and spinning up VMs, right? Uh, as the industry is maturing, VCF is maturing. This is a great thing for IT practitioners to understand, right? So I, I appreciate that. When you talk about your book, right, it comes back to then, or the two books, it comes back to then learning how to measure all of these, you know, components that have to have specific SLAs, right? That's right. That's why it is like total 800 pages. That's a lot of depth that we have to cover. Right. And what I would say is ARIA operations, then you're a big proponent of that, right? Because obviously they have made a lot of this easy. Yeah, for me, it's just a tool. It's just a calculator, right? Then the, the main thing is the concept and ARIA ops happens. Well, I've been in the product team for eight years now. So naturally I ship the, I mean, I, 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 I ship the product together with, together with the product managers and engineering and UX. So I ship it towards that concept. Very nice. Very nice. On the podcast, we usually wrap up. Um, and we're, we've been going for yeah, a little, just less than an hour. So we try to try to wrap these up in an hour. I will ask you what excites you for the rest of 2024. I know you can't talk about things that you're working on, but any major trends, I mean, obviously we have AI and GPU usage and all of that, but like, what are the kind of things that excite you when you're looking at the rest of the year? Well, okay. For me. Okay. So I think, uh, because of my work. Right. So, so we are building this uh, private cloud. Sure. So the, we, I think from an engineering standpoint, I think for the first time we are making an actual attempt to create a single product called this private cloud. And the boundary that we had before between the various, uh, you know, the business units in VMware is no more. And that is super exciting for me because for 15 years in VMware, well, that, that, that was not possible. It was just out of the question. But right now, the, it's turned 180 degrees. It's now it is like your job, right? So, so yeah. So me now, I work very closely with Fisker team. And well, it's basically one product. There's no boundary anymore. And that's really, really exciting for me. I think the next... Uh, several years we will uh, we'll see a you'll see a ton of changes things that you never thought oh that was also in the scope that, that you guys are doing this yes they're doing it you yeah, see I, yeah yeah i agree i agree i'm really excited about the fact that uh, there is one product team now it reminds me of vmware in 2000 2007 when we did have v, uh uh what is it? Virtual infrastructure three, right? Where there was a product that was focused. Obviously, we didn't do storage, we didn't do network, but it was very simplified and it was a single product, right? And I'm excited about coming back to these days and allowing everybody to work and on a single solution for a single problem, which is data center, right? As opposed to trying to do too many things all over the place. I'm excited about that. So I'm glad yeah. you're excited. I'm glad you're working hard on it and I'm glad you oh, like yeah like being here um you know a lot of people 
listen in the community fabric about oh broadcom it's a horrible place it's a no, broadcom no. company it's like no I, I i keep telling people like i'm actually completely in sync with everything that's been happening the way they brought the groups together the what things they're yeah. focusing on yeah. uh, i'm actually excited about it yep i think paul turner said something publicly about 2024 right and uh, i think that can that is people can just google it paul turner right and uh, yeah you 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 will see uh, exciting stuff all right. Yeah. All right. So last thing that we hit because we do live stream on V Barbecue. If you uh, on YouTube, youtube.com slash V Barbecue, V B A R B E C U E. If you want to see what uh, Ewan looks like, you can go there. We we do have camera versions of the of the live stream. You can take a look at him. If you see him at an Explorer, uh, you can do that. And because we're on V Barbecue, and it's usually Wednesday at lunchtime, we like to ask uh, if you're in Singapore. What kind of barbecue do you like to make, or where do you like to go get barbecue? You know, do you? I know you. I know you do barbecue in Asia, right? So, what kind of barbecue do you like? Is it barbecue on a little dish with a pan that fries? What type of barbecue do you like? And if you're in Singapore, where would you go to get it? Well, okay, uh, in Singapore, where you get it, we have this fish called ota, the fish barbecue ota, and you can get it in many of the, the neighborhoods. Uh, area right so they are individually bamboo i think it was a bamboo or something i don't know what yeah. list so the thin slice right uh, i think like about a dollar each or something like that so that is a fish barbecue yeah that is a pop it's, it's called the otta otta all right there you go so that awesome uh, thanks a lot for being here uh, Ewan, thanks for getting up early in the morning and being with us. And uh, it, we're excited about uh, your book coming out. Uh, we'll see if we can get uh, that book published somewhere easy, and uh, we'll get Julia Klaus to, you know, tweet that out on the on the the, the community Twitter handle. And uh, and thank you, thank you very much for being here. All right, guys, we're at the end of the show. We'll be back again next week, every week, uh, Wednesday, 12 to 1. Come by, say hello to Matt uh, Lungeth, uh, Corey Romero, and myself, uh, vmw.re slash pod. So vmw.re slash pod. If you want to come in and say hello to us, we we do these shows real time every week, Wednesday, 12 to 1. Uh, Julia, thanks again for being here late in the evening. We'll be back next week. Until then, everybody go get some barbecue and have a great rest of your week.